Oh, we are live. That happened quicker than I was expecting. Let me pull this up real quick. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Just getting kicked off here. Making sure I can see your comments on Facebook. There we go. Okie dokie dokie. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining. Um, look at us live on Facebook and YouTube. We're going crazy over here. We're going crazy. Uh, thanks for joining today. I am going to spend the next 30-ish minutes um, doing my favorite thing in the world to do. This is what I do on vacation. This is what I do when I'm not doing anything. I like to look at on-market land deals and see if there's deals, to be, uh, to be very blunt about it. Um, today, I'm going to be looking through the lens of subdivide deals. And just frankly, we don't really do this for just straight flips. Um, not to say you can't, uh, there's definitely probably deals out there, but when it comes to doing value add land deals, there's a lot of opportunity on the market. Um, a lot of people overlook this. Uh, we have a couple deals in the pipeline that are on market. Um, and frankly, we're doing a lot of searching on market. And so it's easy. It's kind of fun because we can just jump in and look at deals together. Um, so it should be a fun stream. If you are one of the 40 people here right now, either on YouTube or on Facebook, please say, hey, I don't like to talk to myself straight <laughs> for 40 minutes or however long. And Ajay's not here today. So uh, let me know you're here. And also, if you will let me know in the comments, um, give me an area, give me a region. I'm just going to go to Zillow. I'm going to go to land.com. I'm going to open it up. Um, and we're going to just, just look at deals. We're going to look at deals, how I would look at them. Uh, if we were trying to find a subdivide deal, there's, well, there's some more fanciness we could do, but for today's purposes, we're not going to get super crazy in depth in it. Um, so if you have an area, drop it down here, drop it in the chat. I'll choose one of them. Um, we'll go to Zillow, we'll go to land.com and we'll see what we see. Uh, two quick things. Um, first one, I am going to do in the next week or two a deep dive on two deals we did last year that made just about $2 million net net after investors, people were paid off um, to the company, not net net of taxes, but net net of everything else. And so um, I'm going to be doing that. Actually, I don't know when I'm going to do it, but we do have a registration link. Uh, Jessica can put that somewhere or it is somewhere, Jess. Is it in the chat or is it in the, it's somewhere. I bet you guys will be able to find it. Um, actually, Jess, will you just tell me real quick? Can I bring you on just for a second? I should ask you this. Sorry. Hello. Jessica, hello. Where, where is this link? Um, I created it. We can have them comment um, and we can yeah. send it out to them or I can drop it in the comments. No, just, um, just leave a comment, say subdivide. If you want to get the link, someone on my team will send it to you. Um, I don't know if we're going to do this on Facebook. I'll probably do it off Facebook live and stuff just because there's like, and you know, there's like private details and such. Uh, so we'll probably set up a private Zoom. If you comment subdivide, uh, we'll get you the link to register. Thank you, Jessica. I will take you off the screen because I know how much you like to be here. Um, if you leave subdivide in the comments, someone on my team will send that to you. Sign up for it in the next week or two. Um, I'll jump on, I'm going to go over a couple of deals, real deep dive, how we found them, what we did to them, who we sold them to, and then, you know, the important part, how do we make the money, right? And how much money do we make and uh, what did that look like? So if you're interested in coming to that, leave a comment, someone on my team will say hello, send you a link. Rich, what's up? Nice to see you. Issa, what's up, man? Um, let's see who else we got. Don, Jacob, Aaron. Todd, what's up? Rich, what's up, my friend? Mr. Bill, what's going on? Kevin, nice to see you. Dave, Aaron, let's see who's on Facebook. Facebook won't let the comments come straight through. Who is on Facebook? Rich is on Facebook. David, Dave Ayers, what's up, man? Devin, a lot of other people. I'm going to break this if I try to do too much. Thank you, everybody, for jumping on. We really appreciate it. Um, we love to put free content out for you guys. Hope it helps. Hope it's helping you grow your business. Um, last thing, and then we'll jump in here. Um, for me, I started my land business in 2016. And 
in 2020, I transitioned to doing pretty much all value add deals. Um, most of the deals that I do that are flips are mostly just funding deals now. So for me and my business, we operate very lean. Uh, we have a small team and we're very focused on finding subdivide opportunities, both on and off market. Um, I saw a drastic change in my business, the ability to do 5, 10, 20 deals a year and make multiple seven figures versus where I was before that as we were doing. I think in our prime, we did almost or maybe just over 200 deals. Those were a lot smaller deals. Um, what do we call it these days? The, the red ocean in the middle of nowhere, kind of your standard low, uh, very rural, lower dollar flips. And um, now we're trying to do as little deals as we can, which sounds a little crazy, but um, trying to do a few really good smaller deals throughout the year. And hopefully today gives you a quick look inside. If you are interested in growing your business that way, I have an entire program. Uh, it's called our subdivision partnership program. You come in, you work with directly with me, directly with my team of experts on subdividing. And the goal is to help you find a deal I laid it out in the group the other day. I forgot exactly how it was. Find the deal, underwrite the deal, fund the deal. Um, and the goal is we do the deal together. If you want to come in and learn, keep the deal for yourself, that's totally cool as well. Um, you don't have to do deals with us. We're probably about 50-50 in the group of people who want to partner with me versus people who just want to learn and then execute with their own capital or their own, um, their own resources. But Regardless, uh, if you're looking to transition or add a vertical to your business, as I'd like to say it, which is value add focused, um, let us know in the comments. Uh, say subdivide coaching if that's it, if you're interested in that. Uh, no obligation. No one's going to charge anything, but uh, my team can chat with you a little more, see if it's a good fit. Um, smaller group, very, very focused on value add. And I'll just be selfish. Half the reason we run it is because people bring me deals and I get to do them with them. Um, so if you're interested, leave a comment. Someone on my team will reach out, see if it's a good fit. Maybe now, maybe later, who knows? Um, but if you want to do subdivides, if you want to, um, add that business vertical to your business this year, um, I'd love to do it with you. I'd love to work alongside you. That's the only coaching I personally do, um, within our programs. If you are newer looking to start or scale your land business, we have a lot of great programs with that as well. Um, we have a lot of great coaches that help our clients in that aspect. And I do, I do group calls in that realm as well, but where I'm really focused on my brain is these days are value add deals. So if you're interested in adding that to your business, uh, leave a comment wherever you're watching subdivide coaching and somebody on my team will reach out, no obligation, low stress messenger, phone call, whatever you guys want to do. Um, and if it's a good fit, maybe we we'll talk more. Okay. All right. There we go. Got a lot of the way. Where are we going? Where are we going here? And I do apologize. I have like a stuffy nose right now. My allergies are crazy. So I sound a little stopped up. That's why. Okay. Somebody says Waller County. Somebody says Abilene. Um, anybody else? If you want me to look somewhere specifically for value add deal, let me know. I got a Texas here. All three have been Texas so far. We got one in Georgia. Uh, somebody says Amarillo, a lot of stuff going up. Um, Texas Panhandle, Western Oklahoma. Um, not a big fan of those areas. Dusty, this is a good place to start today. Um, I'm not saying it's not a good area to do them, but the challenge in those areas is if you're looking at land where let's say the disposition price, the sales price at the end of the day, um, is $5,000 an acre or less it really restricts you from being able to do any sort of true value add outside of paperwork, right? Outside of just a, a new survey or maybe a rezoning or replatting. But if you got to add roads, if you got to add infrastructure, you got to add driveways, you got to add water or whatever it is, the spreads sometimes are not big enough to do a lot of work. Um, I know some people would tell me otherwise, but uh the deals I've looked there are they can get a little bit thin if there's not a disposition price above 5,000 an acre. And the reason I say that is because often we find that we're putting a thousand dollars or $2,000 per acre in, in value add and improvements to the property. And so if you think about buying land at 2,500 an acre, selling it at 4,500 an acre, but I got to add a thousand dollars an acre of improvements, my margins compress quite a bit, 
right? And then you add in funding the deal, interest, partners, all that kind of stuff. It just drives the price down. So I like to find stuff where we can dispo above 5,000 an acre. Uh, I generally find that that's going to help us um, find good deals. Not an all-encompassing statement. For example, if you find a good deal in West Texas where there's a lot of road frontage, you don't have to do a ton of work to it, could very much be a good deal. Um, but just as a comment, stuff in the Panhandle, Western Oklahoma, I've looked there a lot and um, they're slower to sell and the dispo prices aren't as high, which doesn't give you as much room to play with. So I will let you, Dusty, you can own the Texas Panhandle in Western Oklahoma. And if you find a good deal, man, bring it on over. Mm. Okie doke. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's do that. Let's do, let's do, let's do. Why don't we do this? Hi, Gene. Glad you're here. Somebody says Tyler, Texas. I'm interested in that area as well. So let's, let's look over near Tyler. All right. First thing I'm going to do, share my screen. Let's share this window. So it's going to look a little funky for a second. Um, I'm just going to go to Tyler, Texas here. So we're going to start here. And I will do the same on land.com. Give you guys just a quick little observation. Um, I like looking at like the Zillow's and the realtor.com, just anywhere where MLS listings are, prom are, are going to be the prominent um, listing source for a piece of land. Here's why. There's a lot of residential agents who just aren't as familiar with land. And that's where I see that there's opportunity sometimes to come in and make good deals happen on market. Whether on the other end, a lot of stuff that you find on land.com isn't always on the MLS. Um, typically, it's because they're land professionals, their clients are already advised, and they are attempting to get this you know, maximum price. And so these pocket listings we find on land.com uh, that aren't anywhere else, sometimes, um, not always, but sometimes give us less opportunity. So I like to see stuff that's listed, maybe poorly listed if possible, um, and then go from there. Okay. So I'm on Zillow. First thing I'm going to look at here, I'm going to take this boundary out. Um, I'm going to do lots and land and I'm also going to do manufactured. I've had a lot of good deals where there's like a manufactured house on a larger piece of property. So I always add lots in manufactured when I'm searching. And then another thing that I look for here is just the acreage size. So again, depending on where you're working, um, this isn't a hard and fast rule, but often if we're doing a value add deal, that is a little, that's rule, right? There's more commercial or urban value add deals. And then there's a little more rule, right? And that's what we focus on is kind of the rural recreational type stuff. Um, and with that, often we're going to want enough acreage to do anything with. So five acre listings, 10 acre listings, even 20 acre listings are often a little too small for us to find a lot of value that we can add, if you will. So I generally like to look at um, stuff that's above 20 acres. Sometimes I'll go 50 acres. Uh, let's just do 50 here for uh, for whatever. And you'll see there's not a, there's not a perfect rhyme or reason to how we're doing this. And uh, there's some other cool things you can do. Like for example, you can go to data tree, you can pull all the on market listings in an area. And, um, I don't know what the services are cause we have a tool internal, but I can upload all those listings and I can get a spreadsheet spit back out, uh, that tells me how much road frontage some properties have, how much floodplain wetlands, those kinds of things. Um, that's a tool we've been building internally for a, I don't know, a while. Um, and if you are a client of ours here listening, exciting news for you is we're going to make that tool available to all of our clients internally once we feel comfortable enough to open it up. Um, it's still a little bit in beta mode, but um, if you are a client, that will be a good tool. And that's something that, um, that, that I like to do is to pull listings in an area, run it through, because things I'm looking for very simply are road frontage, right? I would like, like almost always a deal um, is going to be more likely um, to be put together if you've got some existing road frontage to work off. 
because roads are the most expensive thing that you're going to put into a property. So if we can find stuff straight off a road, that's always great. All right. Um, so let's just start here. Um, and I'm just going to start looking around. Um, what we got here? So we're in Tyler. I don't know this market extremely well, but let's look south of Tyler just because that's what my brain's going to right now and see what we see. Um, I can generally tell you guys too, and one important thing to note when you're looking at a potential value add project that's on market, what's the disposition price of the smaller lots, right? So say I want to take, let's just take a random listing here. Say I want to take this listing, um, so the load is 120 something acres, uh, and I want to cut it down into 10 acre tracks, right? Well, I can see here they're asking like 25 or $30,000 an acre for this property. And so I would need to know that the subdivided lots would sell for, let's call it double that. And I can already tell you it's going to probably not be the case. <laughs> Right. So if I were to go right here and just look at lots, let's say five to 20 acres. Let's see what we see. 10 acres for 179K. It's 18,000 an acre. Uh, seven acres for 115. What do we got there? 10, 15,000 an acre. Um, no more than that. 20,000 an acre. Yeah, 15, 20,000. Uh, we got an eight acre lot here. 215 it's about 20,000 an acre let's do a quick uh, sold analysis in this area so I can back out a little more get some more comps all right so we got a 10 acre uh, looks like it was a subdivide so that's a good this is a good comp to use uh, looks like we've got 10 acres with some trees off of a paved road with some power lines here and these were selling for ballpark. 287, that's about 20, 25,000 an acre, um, 28,000, but who knows what it really sold for, could have been a little bit less. So with, with what I just looked at here, again, I'm doing a quick Facebook Live here, I'm not going super deep into the data, but it's really important to understand what am I looking at? What price points can I sell my subdivided lots at so that I can start looking at the larger properties and understand what price I can pay? So ballpark in, you know, within, uh, that's like right outside of Tyler, it looks like. So in this area, we're seeing about 20,000, 25,000 an acre. Let's see what this one was. Five acres. What happened here? 1.8. I don't know why that's so expensive. Probably going to call that an outlier. Let's see what we got over here. 20 acre lot. Sold for 490. So it looks pretty confident. 20, 25,000 an acre might be a might, might be a good disposition price. I don't know. I'm not going to confirm that here, but I'm going to say for this live, we could probably sell five, 10 acre lots in that 20 to $30,000 an acre range. If you got questions while I'm going through this, drop them in the chat. I'll come back through um, and I'll try to answer them at the end here. Okay. So let's go and look back for stuff that's on market and let's change our acreage filters to go back to let's do 50 acres and above. Okay. Start seeing what we see. So that's, so this is already, they're already asking on this property, you know, 30,000 something an acre. It looks like, so probably not interested on that. Let's look here. 60 acres. Mm, at for a million, what is that? A million divided by 60, it's about 16,000 an acre. Eh, maybe if they'd come down on the price, that would work. Let me go back, where was that? Let's see what else we got. We got a listing for a million here. Another one for a million, those are 20,000 an acre. Got something over here. 20, 25,000 an acre. What else we got? Let me see. Let's see. 115 for 1.7. It's about 16, 15,000 an acre. Okay. So I'm just going to look at this one. The first thing I'm going to look at is do we have any road frontage? 
Um, so let me go over here to land ID. Where are we in Texas? Let's see if we can find this property. I don't think they have a map here. Um, not much, not much, not much. Okay, I really just want to see how much road frontage we're working with on this property. Take this address, come dump it in here. Mm -hmm. Is this the right property? Yep, that's the right one. So let's see. Okay, so here's the deal they have. This is what they got for sale. Let's add some overlays here, FEMA. All right, so already I can tell you a lot of floodplain, probably gonna be a pass. Um, I could look at this more, but I can already just tell you by looking at this, this amount of floodplain in the back of the property. Um, is going to just take up too much of what we'd be able to do. It looks like there may be an oil gas maintained road here that we could potentially use to cut lots off of. We couldn't be for sure there. Um, but anyhow, that deal doesn't excite me very much. So let's keep looking here. What do we got here? 64 acres for 420. 8,000 an acre. If you see here, this is priced well. It's getting a lot of traction. It's getting like 40, 50 views a day, five or 10 saves. So this is definitely a property that people are interested in, which means it's probably at a decent price. Let's see if I can find it here. Sixty-four acres. That's fifty. Let's see if we can get a little more accurate. This is a challenge because we don't really know where it is. Let's see. Just north off sixty-four, two forty-seven. Did I misread that? Oh, that's 246. Joke's on me. All right, so they're saying it's right here. Don't think it's that one. Don't think it's that one. And we got one picture, so I don't know. 64 acres in this area. Well, that one's gonna be challenging because I don't know where it is just by looking at it here. See, it's right by this creek. Let's see. On to the next one. That could be an interesting one. If somebody wants to go find it themselves, it's this listing here. I don't know exactly where it is, so I'm just gonna save us some time. We got 1.6 million 
And let's use this one. This one looks like it. It's definitely listed too high, but I'm going to use this one as an example. This is at 262 and 21, 22. There's an address on here. Onion Creek, what is that? This is... Old Omen Road. Old Omen Road, Tyler, Texas. All right, I think this is it, All right? Yeah, looks like it. Say 64, what are they saying here? I don't think that that's right. For some reason, MapRite's saying 156, but it's 60 acres. This is definitely the property. All right. What can we do with this guy here? What can we do with this guy? First thing I like to look at is the road frontage. So if we can jump onto Google Maps here, see a street view. Hmm. Pretty nice, uh, this is a nice, so one thing that I'm very, I'm not very particular about, but I just know makes it easier to sell tracks is entrances off of a county maintained paved road. Paved road frontage is always gonna bring you more money than dirt road. So like that, pretty secluded, got some good tree coverage. I really like this property just from a feature and layout perspective. Um, what could we do? What could we do? One thing I'm going to look at real quick is if this is in the city limits of Tyler. It is not. And yeah, it's right on the edge. So probably have a little bit of flexibility um, on what we'd be able to do with this lot. But let's just see what it would look like cut up. So one thing I like to see is at least 300 feet of road frontage per lot. So we've got about 1,800 feet of road frontage. So we could probably do six lots. Um, I'm not going to draw them all out here, but they would look something like this. Say 300-ish feet. So that might be a subdivided lot out of this overall property here. Okay, so we see so we see that. Um, let's use this as our as our example property today. Um, give me just one second here. Oh gosh, that big red button is scary, Jessica. I always want to 
it's like it's a red button on Zoom to stop sharing your screen. So sometimes I want to click that button. Um, sorry, I just wanted to remove some info from this pro forma because it is for a different deal. Okay, let me share my screen again. Share screen, window, this one, share, and go back to pro forma. Okay, so this one is, they say it is 64 acres. Okay, let's say 64. And just for today's sake, I'm gonna say we're gonna get six, 10.7 acre lots. Um, just so we can be calculating out of the right number. They are asking 1.6 million. Um, 25 an acre is what they're asking. That's quite a bit. All right. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to work backwards to what I would pay for the property. They don't want to sell it at that price. That's up to them. But uh, we're just going to start with that. I'm going to guess to do a survey, a subdivide survey, um, probably boundary and to cut it up. It's going to cost like 10 grand. So that's a good estimate. Um, I don't know what we're going to need here. And there's probably going to be some sort of county water study. Those are normally about 2,000. Uh, we probably have the septic looked at. That's probably going to be another 1,500. Uh, should be a pretty easy, pretty easy uh, plotting, I would guess. So just putting in $1,000 of fees with the county to plot this. And then, hey, I'm just guessing 1,000 bucks for a driveway permit, that might not be real, but just guessing. So for this one, we're not gonna need a ton. Um, something I typically do with a deal like this is I will have the front part of this property mulch down, or about 100 feet in, just so it looks nice. Uh, it's got a good park-like clean feel when a buyer comes to look at it. So it'll probably be about four acres of work there. I normally see that a crew can do two acres a day. So two days of site work will probably cost about, let's call it 7,500. Could be high, could be low, but that's probably about it. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna say 7,000 bucks a piece for a nice driveway. 7,000, oops, each. Per driveway, so I was gonna say seven thousand times our lots. Okay, so maybe 30, 40 grand. That's probably a little high, but that's fine. Uh, culverts. That's in my estimate there. Electric. Let's see. What did we look like? We got lines here. Um, sometimes when we do a project like this, we'll drop in a new electric pole on each lot. Um, so let's just assume we need to do that. I'm going to call that 1500 bucks per. So let's say 1500 times the lots. Realistically, that should be a pretty easy project. Um, got some numbers in here estimating that we're going to take a bank loan. Might do that, might not. But I like to do this just because it gives me a realistic cost of the capital. Okay, so it looks like we'd be all in 1.7 million. And let's see what our dispo would be in this area. So I'm gonna go right back to where we were. And I'm gonna look at five, two, 20 acre properties. Got a seven acre lot for sale at about 20,000 an acre. Not too bad. You can see this has been on the market for a while though. Not getting a lot of traction. What else do we see here? Six acres for 189. This one's getting more traction. This one there must be a weird issue with. I don't know why it's, it seems like it should be getting more traction than it is. So I don't know why it isn't, but 
um, seen about three, six, or eighteen, about thirty thousand an acre there. What do we got here? Thirty thousand, twenty-three thousand. Let's say conservatively that we could sell these for twenty-five thousand an acre, maybe twenty-seven thousand. So that's what we're going to sell. If we just bought the property at full asking price, we would lose money. That's not what we want. Not what we want. So let's back out of this and figure out what would be a number that would make sense to buy this property. Okay. Um, I'm generally looking for a unlevered yield on cost. So just straight ROI, how much are you spending versus how much did, uh, how much are you making versus how much did it cost you? Or I guess how much did it cost you versus how much are you making? Um, I like to see that about 35%. And then this is with leverage. So if you had a loan or um, seller financing, something to the effect. Um, let's do this. 0.25 million. All right. So if we bought that for 1.25, we'd see about a 17% return on cash. And if we had, say, 30% down whether that would be through seller financing or through a bank um we would more or less put four hundred twenty thousand into this deal and get 669 out that's still not where i want it so let's take another look here a million bucks okay so if we were to buy it for a million we'd be in that ballpark so let's see what can we what what can we work on here? Let's say we could sell the lots for thirty thousand a piece, thirty thousand an acre rather, um, which I think is kind of high. But let's just say we could for thirty thousand an acre. And what could we spend on this lot? Maybe come up to one point two. Okay. So if we could get 30,000 an acre for the subdivided lots, um, when we paid 1.2 for the property, we could sell it at 30,000. And let's even say they'd owner finance it. Um, let's say they'd owner finance it with 15% down. That means we'd have 85% leverage, which would mean we'd have $200,000 in this project and we would have 600 and something out. So those would be good numbers. As you can see, the you know the less leverage you have, for example, um, maybe you only get sixty percent down, or you got that forty percent down, sixty percent leveraged. Still not horrible. Um, and when I'm thinking through a project like this, I'm thinking about how much headache is it, right? So, you know, when would I be willing to take a little bit less return? Um, and pay more for the properties when I don't have to do as much to it, right? This is a pretty simple one. You would cut it up into 10 acre lots, um, and then you could do uh, a little bit of work here, put some driveways in, would be a pretty easy project. So I might be willing to cut my number down a little bit um, as far as what return I'm looking to make here, okay? So if we could sell the properties for 30,000 bucks an acre, and if we could get, let's go back to this. Say we could do it where we have 25% down, whether that's through seller financing or it's through a bank. Um, I think these are realistic numbers. We could be in the project for 340, out for 820. Uh, and we'd have about, you know, two, uh, 240, or however you want to think about it, it'd be like 140% return, a little over a double up. So that'd be a good deal, right? Um, so if we could buy this for 1.2, Sell them at this price point. There we go. We'd be we'd be there. We probably have a project, uh, especially if they'd sell or finance it to us at that price. Um, let's see. What were they asking? One point six. Go back here. And they're asking one point six. So probably wouldn't work. Right? I'm guessing they're not going to sell it for 1.2, but you never know. Let's do one more thing since this is an example. Let's pretend we could do smaller lots. Okay. 
So let's say we could do something. I'm going to just keep it real simple for today. Um, let's say we could do something like this, where we could maybe run a road in here and have it like this, have a road like this. So then I don't know if that's exactly how it would be laid out, but um, then what this would allow us to do, we could do smaller lots. So off this boundary here, we could do maybe five acre lots. It actually lines up just about right. So you could do a lot there and then you could do similar type lots here. So if you had a road here, let me extend this a little bit. Now I can put a lot there and I could put a lot back here. A little smaller, four acre lot, and you could work the plan from there. Okay, so let's pretend we can do this. All right. Now the question is, can we do this? Who knows, right? Um, we would need to talk to the county. Uh, we would need to go through a, probably a more formal process. If I were to just cut this into 10 acres, being outside of city limits, it's probably in their ETJ. Um, in Texas, that's an extra, extra territorial jurisdiction. Um, there might be a little bit of approvals, but for the most part, I could do 10 acre lots with minimal work, I would think. When I start going down to five acres, three acres, wanting to, wanna, wanting to run a road here, um, things are obviously gonna get more expensive, right? But let's say that we were able to sell three to five acre lots at 40,000 an acre. So let's go back up here. Let's do 12 lots of five acres. Is that about right? Let's say 5.2. Um, 5.4. Somewhere in there. If you're wondering what the hell I'm doing, I'm just trying to make it so that I'm actually calculating acre for acre. Um, and this is just showing me I have a little bit off here. Okay. So let's go in here, 12 lots. Let's say we could get 40,000 an acre as smaller lots. And how much road did I have? So I put in, uh, let me just measure this a little differently. About a thousand feet and how far is this? All right, 1700 feet. So let's say we had to do 1700 feet of road. I move this down here. Um, I don't know what is on this road as far as a water line goes, but we would probably need access to water, whether that be through a well or through a water line. So we might have to run this water line up into here. Probably going to be challenging from a cost perspective. But uh, if it's a six inch line, let's see, water line extension. Let's see, we could do that at 30 bucks a foot. That would be 1700 times 30. Okay. So I'm putting an extra 50,000 in here for running the water lines. Probably about the same thing for a dirt road. And anybody watching this who's like, wow, those are really expensive. I estimate very high when I'm doing, um, when I'm doing a project like this. Um, always better to be conservative. So we're guesstimating we could put in a, a dirt road and extend that water line for a hundred grand. And that would bring our sales price up to 40,000 an acre. Okay. Uh, let's see what this project looks like now. Oh, actually it looks really good. Um, what did I do wrong? It seems, it seems too good. <laughs> uh, let's go back to their asking price here. All right. They're asking 1.6. Let's say I could do this whole project as I laid out here. 
Not a terrible project. 478 in, a million out. Um, so you make about 500,000. Actually possible. Can you sell five acre lots for $40,000 a piece out there? I don't know. You'd have to figure that out. Um, but we got a seven acre here for 250. What is that? Uh, it's not even 30 an acre, is it? So probably not going to be able to hit those numbers. 30,000 an acre. But this is more for an example. If this project, if we were able to get it for say, because I, I realistically think 30K an acre, maybe 32.5 for, for smaller tracks. And the reason I say this is, let me take my screen share off real quick. The reason I say this is because a lot of people, when they're looking for like an acreage home site, oh, I've had that up the whole time. Um, when they're looking for an acreage home site, a lot of times they're more, the buyer that is, is more interested in just how much is it going to cost me, right? Versus am I getting three acres or five acres or seven acres? Oftentimes it's, can we get that price below 150,000? Um, and the reason I say 150,000, that's just from my experience where I see breaks, right? In different levels of buyers. A lot of people, the majority of the buyer pool can afford a parcel under 100,000 or 150,000. When you start going above that, it's going to get more expensive, right? So for this specific deal, it would be great if we could do five acre tracks, 32,000 an acre. That keeps us right around that uh, $150,000 per property mark, which might be pretty decent. Okay. Um, what else do I want to say about this? Well, wait, what happened? Oh, I dropped my price way down here. So now we'd have to drop this down. And so for that to make sense, you have to be somewhere in there. So let's say you got this between 1.2 and 1.6, somewhere in there, and you determined you could sell these lots and you could put this road in like I said you could. That'd be great, right? Um, or you could do 10 acre tracks and you just have to get the property at a much better price. So um, could work, could not work. Anybody watching this, if you want to go call this agent and ask them if they would do cheaper price, seller finance, maybe there's a deal there. Maybe there's something we could look at. All right. Let me use, that's my example. Let me come back and see what we got in the comments. Can we get access to that spreadsheet? No, you cannot. Um, I give away almost everything for free, uh, but that's a tool that we're building and we continue to build. They're for our paying subdivide clients. So it's one of the only things I don't give out for free. So I do apologize. That. Um, am I looking to double my money? Yeah, generally, right? So again, if we go back to this project, uh, let me share that screen again. So we go back to this project. This isn't doubling my money, right? This is just dollar in, dollar out. We're in the project for 1.4. We're out for 1.9. So that's like a 30% return, right? Um, that's okay. I mean, that's not great, right? You're probably not going to put in a 1.5 million to make 1.9 or to get 1.9 back. Um, so that probably wouldn't work from a cash basis, right? But when we add in whether it would be seller financing, bank financing, hard money, uh, some sort of partner who just who would loan to you at like an interest rate type deal. Well, then we have, you know, a lot less money out of pocket. So we only have to bring 370 to the table. And now we are doubling our money, right? So that's what the two plus means is that are we doubling our money leveraged? Yes, we are, right? Um, so yeah, I do want to generally double my money. It's kind of the same thing that we look at just from a standard land perspective, when I'm doing a land deal, I want to be able to double my money. So great question. Um, glad to help. Uh, so what do we got here? Price is a helpful tool. Add your acreage increments and search land. It will aggregate comps and give you dollar per acre for each increment. 10, 40, 20, 10. Yeah, price has got a lot of features. I don't use it as well as I should, but they do. So that's a great tip. Thank you. Let's see. Somebody said it's been on the market for a while. I didn't even notice that. Whoa. I didn't even notice that. This property had been on the market for 600 days. They might take 1.2 million. 
Now maybe I am going to call them later today. Uh, I feel like this realtor is going to get some calls today from this. Um, love the beard, Dad. Thanks, Patrick. Uh, any other questions I can answer today? Um, are you seeing the 150k lid based on cash prices or inclusive of seller financing? What's up, Angie? Nice to see you. Um, Angie's who taught me the Zillow trick of we want to see 12, 15 views a day, one or two saves a day. Um, that generally shows us we're getting some good traction on the property. My numbers may be a little off, Angie. Feel free to correct me. But uh, are you seeing the 150k lid based on cash prices or inclusive? Pretty inclusive of seller financing or cash. You can probably go a little bit higher with the seller financing. And even then, I when I think about it, some of like the 100 to 150,000 band, a lot of those people want seller financing. So um, not a hard and fast rule, but uh, that's generally what I see. Um, what if you pay for the spreadsheet? No, sir. That's just for our clients. Uh, somebody says, how are you funding most of your projects? Um, a lot of it these days is through the money that I personally have and that I've raised. Um, I've got a small fund that I use and deploy capital out for deals like this. So I do that. I use my own capital. That doesn't really help you answer if you're getting started how you do this. My answer for, um, for that is like for your first project like this, it is best to work with a funding partner. That's why I love our sub our subdivide partnership program. Because if you find a deal, you talk to this agent, you got under contract, you come to me and say, hey, let's do this deal, right? Um, then, <clears throat> uh, you know, there, there could be something there. Um, and you're not going to have to go worry about pulling, you know, a couple million bucks out of your pocket or going to an investor and saying, hey, I know this is my first subdivide deal. Um, give me $2 million, right? Uh, so that's why I'm a fan of our, um, of our program. So if you're interested in doing subdivides, comment subdivide coaching. Someone on my team will talk to you. Um, but this is what I tell most people is like, man, your first value add project, save yourself some sleep. Okay. Uh, and just work with a partner, right? Especially somebody like if they'll come in, fund the deal 50, 50 with you. Um, how I generally do it when somebody brings me a deal is they come in and let's just use this deal for example, right? Let me uh, pull it back up. Um, for this deal, so something I'll do with folks when they come in, if we're going to do a deal together, um, I would say, Hey, here's how, here's how it works. <laughs> okay. First off the money, the, whoever brings the cash, whether it's me, whether it's a funding partner, I bring in, whether it's you, whatever it is, that money has to make a return. Right? So in this example, there's $370,000. Okay. So let's say three, I'll just say equals this number here. Okay. So first, generally I do a pref. Let's say it's like a 30% uh, pref. Okay. Um, so first thing that I want to happen in this deal is I want to ensure that I get my money back. And then I want to ensure I make 30% on it. Right. So let's do this. So the first 110,000 in profit would go to whoever brought the money. Right. If it was me, it would go back to me. So I'd get 372 back and then I'd get 111 back. And then um, net profit, uh, that would equal this plus this minus this. Oh, that's not what I was going for. So there'd be 369 left and then partner split. Uh, can't spell. And then we would just take this, we divide it by two, and then that would be how I'd break it up with a partner, right? That's how I generally do it. That's how I teach people to do it. It's a pretty strong, um, pretty strong funding waterfall, if you will. Whatever money, like again, somebody brings me a deal. I have a couple of people who have brought me like $3 million deals lately. And they're like, how would the partnership work? I'm like, whatever the money, however we got the money for that $3 million deal, we would establish that and they would get paid the pref 
and then past that we would split the upside, right? That's how I do it for a lot of my deals. And if you're looking for a structure to fund with um, maybe somebody within your network, that's what I generally do. Give them a good pref, 20, 30, 40%, and then split the profit um, or keep the profit, right? Okay. I don't remember what question I was answering there, but hopefully that answers it. Uh, somebody says, wouldn't you go for a hotter market? How do you know how fast the lots would sell? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, two answers to that. One, I would um, I would definitely check first just to see how those lots are selling in the area. So I'm almost out of time here because I have a meeting after this, but on priced, you can go in and you can see how quickly lots sell in a certain area, like average days on market. I would look at that. Another thing I would do is I would run a set of Facebook ads to the Tyler, Texas market. Uh, I'd spend a, like $100 a day for a couple of days. And it would be a very simple ad. It would say like $129,000, five acres, 20 minutes outside of Tyler. And I would just run that ad, not necessarily to try and like sell the properties, which, but if you do, that's great. But I would run it to test the demand, right? Because I often see if I run an ad like that to a market and I get a lot of responses, say 50 to 100 a day from that ad spend, then that idea of five acre tract, this price point, this far from me, means it's registering in people's minds as something they would be interested in. Um, so that's another thing I do during the due diligence period of my subdivide deals is I just do a simple text ad on Facebook. I geo-target it to the closest major metro and I see what the responses are. If I get a lot of responses, I generally think that there's good there's good appetite in the area for that. Um, and if I don't, then, then you know I'm going to use that as a data point. So um, I do know personally that just right outside of Tyler would be a pretty quick market. Like that deal we just looked at, those would probably sell pretty quickly if they were priced appropriately, and maybe if there was owner financing, right? Um, so it's a great question. It's just going to depend on the market and that's that. There's other cool tools out there too, um, but that's generally how I would go about it. That's a great question though. Always a good idea to gauge the demand and little trick that I like to use is that Facebook ad. You can literally run it from your phone. You can like, you can do the, <laughs> you can make the ad in chat GPT and you can run it from your phone uh, as like a marketplace boosted ad. Um, or you, if you know how to work Facebook mark, or I'm sorry, Facebook ad platform, you could do it through there as well. Great question. Great question. Uh, how do we contact you to do deals? Um, if I know you already, email me. If I don't know you, DM me on, not YouTube, but DM me on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. And we can kind of open the conversation from there. And if there's a deal to be had, we can take it offline to a phone call or to an email or something like that. Sweet. All right, guys. Hope this was helpful. Um, was this helpful? You let me know in the chat. Uh, I like doing these kind of lives because I can just come on and just like we can just find um, we can just find deals together. I think it'll be cool. Uh, eventually, probably we'll find one um, that we'll actually do from a call like this. But let me know in the chat if you guys like this kind of live where I just come on and do a little more in-depth live presentation on how I go after a deal. If you're interested in doing subdivide, uh, if you're interested in growing your business through that specific mechanism, um, leave a subdivide coaching um, comment. Someone on my team will chat with you. And last thing, as we depart here next week, I'm going to be doing a next week or the week after I'll be doing a deep dive into some of the deals we've done over the last year. If you want access to that comment subdivide as well, and my team will send you the link. Thanks guys. Appreciate it. Thanks everybody on Facebook. I can't see you from StreamYard, um, but I love you guys. I appreciate you over in the Facebook group. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, go join our Facebook group. It's called Learn Land University. Um, I do lives like this. I make posts in there. We give away a ton of free resources. So um, there you go. Hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for joining. Jessica, I'm going to push the big red button now. Okay, no, everybody have a good day. We'll see you soon. Bye.